It's the OK Football Luton Town Show. Good to have you all along with us. I'm Ollie Kay and I'm here in the heart of Hightown, in the Bricklayer's Arms. What a pub, what a pub. Shame about the performance yesterday, but we will get on to that. And I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Beefy. And we got a bit of a shake-up to the lineup. You know, imagine freshening up a lineup. Wouldn't know that one. <laughs> um, we got, you'll recognise him from the match previews and the post-match phones. We've got Mark Ryman. Yeah, I've been finally released from the cupboard. <laughs> contrary to popular belief, I don't actually live in Nottinghamshire at all. I've been kept in here, so they've released me as a plan B. Through, uh, through this door. glass, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I've been let out. What a time to be doing the podcast <laughs> as well. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and we've also got a special guest. We've got Tyler from T-Boys TV. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you guys for bringing me on. And uh, looking forward to talking about, well, actually, I don't know if I... <laughs> I don't, I'm not yeah. looking forward looking to forward it. Looking forward to talking to it with, about it with you guys. Yeah, what, what a week to start off. Remember, talk into the mic. We had to tell Lewis the same thing last week. We did. Yeah, but now it's time to round up everything that's gone on around Kenilworth Road this week. And I guess talk about the performances. It's our new segment... I heard it through Rowan's Grapevine. I heard it through Rowan's Grapevine. Shamona. So it's worth talking about Luton 1, Sunderland 2 first. I would refer to this as sort of a, a false dawn in, in terms of oh, after the Watford game where we played fantastically well is a 10 out of 10 performance from everyone on the pitch and then we lost to Sunderland, but the performance was admirable, right? <coughs> the performance was good, yeah. A couple of pretty glaring defensive errors, both leading to goals. You know, Chong with that touchback, just what on earth was he doing? And then Clark just giving his man an acre of space to take a shot. Apart from that, yeah, it was really positive. I thought the high press looked brilliant. The long ball up to Morris, who just bullied everyone was fantastic and I, I think we deserved a draw out of that game at least yeah at least I mean we said the same thing on the post match that it felt a bit like the Premier League days particularly that Burnley game in that you're facing a side that are just clinically taking their chances mm -hmm. and fair play to them two really well taken goals I think Chris Riggs real maturity to, to wait and hold off before taking the shot but from our point of view yeah it really felt like we had started to <laughs> turn a corner, um, particularly up, up, up there with Eli and Morris. Great to see Eli get his first goal as well. Closely followed by his second, right? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I felt for him, it was, it was good because I felt in this game he was unlucky. You know, you look at the game like Plymouth away and Oxford away, uh, sorry, Oxford at home, he should have scored. You know, especially at Plymouth away, you know, he had so many great chances and... You know, he had a great chance in the game, obviously, before he got the goal. Good save by Patterson. And it felt like it was coming for him. And, you know, that's the benefits of him and Morris up front, is that they both work off each other. And you see that last time we was in the championship, it, it works very well. And I think when you, you know, you isolate one of them and then you put one of them behind, it just doesn't work as much. So that was always good. Um, the performance was there, yeah. The only worry I do have, and we keep continuing to do it, is the conceding goals pretty much straight after. You know, we've done that a lot. And, you know, you think you'd see it once maybe, and then you'd sort of progress on it. But we've seen it loads. Grimsby, uh, when we played them in the FA Cup, we've seen it against Burnley last season. And this game, and I think there might have been another game as well. So there, have been, there have been a lot. I think someone it's posted conceded on 20 Twitter. goals this year, haven't we? Yeah, well, you know, it's not even the conceding <coughs> goals, it's how you react to it. But mm. the biggest issue is taking the lead, like we did yesterday. But by the way, this is recorded on a Sunday, it'll be released on a Tuesday. Con going, going ahead to three goals ahead and chucking away the performances. So if we talk about Coventry 3, Luton 2, and under Edwards, it's been a case repeatedly where we actually put quite clear daylight between us and the opposition. And then I'm trying to think the best way to put this. Capitulate. Co capitulate, yeah. collapse. Midfield disappears. <coughs> yeah. yeah, where did they go at half time? Off. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, one of those. Head, head, head's gone. Head's yep. gone. Like a head, massive head loss across the entire team. 
And yeah, we might as well let's pick the bones out of Coventry three, loosen two. Then just just all go for it, you know. Well, therapy session. Positive. Time. Chong had a good game. Chong he his looked fir- fantastic. Looked really good as a number ten. The run for the penalty and just his he was busy. He was picking the ball up deep. He was coming back with it. It was great. So one positive. Chong had a good game. Adebayo got another goal. Is he back now? I hope so. Yeah, two and two. He's, he's well such taken, a form player, isn't he? Really well taken yeah, it was. as well. Real class in in how he just dinked it over the keeper. Yeah, yeah it's great to see him back. Um, so another positive there, and we finally found out what happens to a Morris penalty if the keeper doesn't <laughs> flinch. Because <laughs> always yeah. got there. every oh, single yeah. time the keeper flinches and he sends him the other way. Brilliant. But this time the keeper didn't flinch, and so he just put it past him anyway. Fantastic penalty. Yeah. yeah, right in the bottom corner. As you say, Ch- Chong was, was a real highlight. Um, I'll hold my hands up. I was saying before kickoff, we need Nakamba to start. Why is Chong starting three games in a row? Nakamba should start. Shows what I know. Um, and a couple of things, obviously, you said about the penalty, the run that from deep where he beat about three players oh, yeah. as well and squared it across. I mean, that was Chong, uh, you know, Birmingham 5 Luton nil esque wasn't it? It was that sort, <laughs> of, that sort of run, except it didn't end a goal. Um, you know, the first half, there were loads of positives in terms of the way we defended. Bodies on the line as well. You know, that, that Tom Krause block, um, it was at the other end from us. We were at the game. It's quite hard to see, but you can just see the ball like it on the six yard line and just Luton players coming from nowhere to block it, which is great. It showed that commitment. But then second half, you know, I was we were saying this off air. It felt like it was the 91st minute from the very beginning and and that we were just there was no out ball whatsoever the midfield just camped inside their half without any out ball whatsoever and the moment that you then lose Morris you lose Adebayo then the long ball doesn't work anymore and suddenly we've got nothing in terms of an out ball to counteract their pressure and we just completely capitulated it was so disappointing to watch it really was where do we go from here um, I'm not. Oh, I, I'll be honest. I'm not. I've really given you the hard question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the way I looked at that game yesterday is when we were two new up. You know, I was thinking to myself, well, "This is unbelievable. Is this actually happening?" Um, I, I agree with you. I, I thought Chong should have been dropped, especially the fact that you're away from home as well. I felt more cover in the midfield because we knew we were going to go with two in midfield and then the cam. I was thinking myself, Nakamba and, and Kraus, just for that more cover. Um, but yeah, it's a difficult one because as soon as that second, I don't know what was said at half time. You know, I don't understand. And we've seen this loads of times now. Bournemouth, you know, was the now on one for me. And for me, that, in my opinion, last season, that was the game that defined the season. That yeah. was the, the, the curtain raiser to survive, basically. Um, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. I really don't know. I just think certain substitutions yesterday were wrong. You know, I don't, I don't mind Morris or Elijah coming off. I just think both of them coming off is is not ideal, especially with the way, you know, we do like to put the ball up to them, and you know they both got brilliant control. Um, I just don't really think it works. And like we say week upon week, I don't know why Taylor isn't getting an opportunity. I, I really don't. You know, you know what's happened there? He's done all he's needed to do out on his loan spells, even in the playoff final. You know, he's had a. Had a brilliant cameo, you know, unfortunate on the on the goal. And then obviously, you know, he took one of the penalties and scored. So, I don't know. I, I feel we can definitely rise to the occasion. You know, I thought this season it'd be his great opportunity to shine, but he's just not getting that chance. Yeah, there's something going on, I think, that isn't just performance related. And I don't know what it is, but he feels, like, it feels like he's been frozen out. And is it, isn't Cawley the best performer on in training? Everyone says <coughs> he's the best. I don't know. I'm not at training, but <laughs> I, I, I'm not like you. I think Corley Ridrow is good. I think he's quality. I think he's great on the ball. I don't think he suits our system at all, no. um, but I think he's a good player. And there's an argument that he comes on first, sure, but Taylor needs to be getting more minutes than he's getting, and I don't know why he's not. Just on the Nakamba point, I don't think he's got 90 minutes in him anymore. I don't think he's got 60 minutes in him at the minute. I think the fitness is a real issue. And I don't think he's in a position to start games at the moment. And that's why we're not seeing him. Well, I, I agree. I think the problem bringing someone like Nakamba on is the pressure that brings on a defensive yeah. midfielder. And actually, he struggled for the first sort of five, ten minutes when he came on because it was all them. So it's almost, you know, like shutting the barn door after the horses bolted type situation because, 
getting into the swing of that game is is always going to be tough for him. But I do I do tend to agree a bit like when we brought Pelly on before is that in the position that he plays in, you only need to screw up once and they're in. Yeah. Um, and I think Nakamba struggled with the pace of the game. I tend to agree with you, Beefy, a little bit about Woodrow. I think that he gets a huge amount of stick, but he doesn't get a huge amount of minutes either. Um, but what we've said before, Ollie, on our post-match is that some games are crying out for pace and that game was crying out for pace yeah. and we're going to knock it in there behind. was space in behind yeah. so in that particular occasion i don't understand why taylor i mean brown made a huge difference whenever it did go forward which is maybe like twice so yeah but, but when it did go forward he got the ball he created that chance for woodrow right towards the end that would have made it three two to us different conversation um he got forward and there was a tackle at the end we thought it was a penalty from our end obviously impossible to tell but you can see him go over but he's causing problems because of his pace getting in behind yeah. they're a quick side so we need that I, I, yeah there's th there's clearly something that's that's gone on he's clearly waiting to leave in january and therefore edwards doesn't feel like it's it's worth in any investment really on him which I, is really sad he's a great talent i mean that would just be the most ridiculous piece of transfer business if we let him go to, to be top scorer for two teams in one season in six months is it, it's crazy that we aren't even giving him a chance and, and I, I was watching it on Sky and Sky were waxing lyrical about all of Cov's attacking options they have ridiculous attacking options and I thought what do we have what do we have is uh, after Morrison Elijah Woodrow Brown Taylor whereas they, they have Mason Burroughs well, I think Brown is quality and I yeah. think Taylor he, he is, is quality I he is. I think their yeah. s their starting lineup up front was better than ours. I think Sims had a great game. Had you right is had you right. Uh, I know Coventry fans are down on him at the minute, but he's quality. Yeah. Um, but I think Taylor Woodrow Brown is a great set of options to have. I just don't think we quite used them correctly. I think we're just very tactically one dimensional because we played towards two big men and couldn't change it when we had other players. You know, Brown and Taylor are good options, but they're very different. Yeah. So we have to be a bit more savvy in-game to change tactics, to go, right, well, this isn't working. The long ball is no longer going to work because we don't have a six-foot whatever Elijah is up front or, or Morris to hold the ball up. So we have to play differently, and we didn't. We still kept trying the same thing to, like, Clark, who's <laughs> desperately trying to head the ball, you know, but... It's not. It's not going to work, and I just think you know that that element of it was really, really disappointing. And, and as you were saying, in terms of the substitutions as well, it just felt like all of all of the momentum going forward in the first half was taken off. Every take, you, I get yeah. people are tired, but literally all of the players that were responsible for every attack, he took all of them off almost all at once. Uh, almost to the point where then when before Holmes got sent off he was asking to come off about 10 minutes beforehand I think we'd made all of our substitutions by then or all of the opportunities for substitutions so he couldn't come off and basically therefore that tired pullback which was a definite yellow card was the result of that yeah I mean it, it felt from the first half like we were going to have someone sent off didn't it yeah. um, just a yellow card <laughs> mounting in that first <laughs> half we we were saying with the with the with the referee as well. I said at the start, I was like, he, well, as soon as he booked Alfie, I was like, someone's getting sent off today. Yeah, yeah. Someone's getting sent off today. Yeah. yeah talking about that yellow card, so Doughty, we we're, were discussing it before we started the the, the cameras. Doughty game book, so he misses West Brom. Holmes misses West Brom, which we'll, we'll talk about at the end of the show. But. Doughty getting booked for well, that. I didn't expect it's, that. It's either the case that um, it's a bad yellow card, which it might be, but if the referee has said, play to the whistle, and then started to walk away and Doughty's taken the free kick anyway, it's a yellow card, and every professional footballer will know that's a yellow card. If he hasn't said anything and just assumed that Doughty thinks that, then he's unlucky yeah. to get a yellow in that scenario. We don't know what was said, but it looked on the clip I saw... Um, when they showed it the second time on Sky, that he held up the whistle to Doughty, which would make me think he's tried one to be cheeky and has got a yellow card for his troubles. It was a good free kick. Uh, yeah, First great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you mean when everyone else wasn't paying attention? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it great. <laughs> it's really easy to take a good free kick when nobody's watching. If Tom Holmes is the furthest player forward, you know something's <laughs> happened. So this leaves us 22nd in the league. Rob Edwards... <laughs> 
Mm. And uh, Rob Edwards in the post-match, which you can actually find on the Luton Town app because Luton haven't put it on anywhere. anywhere. It's not on, not on Twitter. It's not on YouTube. Even the Sheffield United one was unlisted on YouTube. This one's just straight on the, the Luton app. And he said, it's on me. Not me. Not, not me on his <laughs> <K. laughs> he, he did play Molly K for that yeah, performance. Yeah, <laughs> blame Molly K. No, he said, it's on me. I'm quoting Rob Edwards. So, what happens well, now? Yeah, of course it's on him. He's the manager. Yeah. It's, it's, but he says this after when, every single game now. When we win, it's on him. And when we lose, it's on him. That's just a, a bit of... Fo- you know, football interviews are largely pointless because just the, there's the repetition of a number of cliches. And that's the I lost cliche. It's on me. Mm. So what? I miss managers digging out players. Miss that. You know. Well, I like Rob Edwards. He seems like a normal human being and a top bloke. And I think, like pretty much every Luton fan, I'm desperate for him to turn it around. Not just because it's Luton. I genuinely want him to succeed as a person because mm. he seems like such a good one. I just has he has he got the wherewithal to do it now? I don't know. I hope so. I mean, we were talking about this afterwards, and him saying it's on me puts a hell of all the weight on his shoulders, and it already looks like he's got well, the weight. It, it does, doesn't shoulders. he? Oh my goodness! And I, d- I don't need him to dig players out, but he can be more and more angry about the second half performance because we were walking away from that game, going, "Yeah, it, he should have changed it up. The substitutions weren't particularly good." But also, they were the same players that in the first half, bodies on the line, as we were saying, and taking their chances. What happened to them? You know, th- th- the players were not good enough in that half, and they should have been better than they were too. So I don't need him to dig single single out any players, but I do want him to. St- I just want to be more angry. Um, just and, and so I it just takes away some of that. I don't want him to be Nathan Jones, but. I think one of the reasons we were saying that people are clamouring for Nathan Jones is because he offers that element of a little bit more. I know, but y- when you listen to Nathan Jones oh. in a post-match interview, <laughs> he's delusional. Oh, he just talks absolute oh, nonsense. So the, the thing with Rob Edwards is, I actually don't mind that he's not angry, because he probably is angry, but he doesn't necessarily show it. He's got mm. s- the normal level of control of his emotions that we'd, we'd expect an adult to have, <laughs> which is not something that Nathan Jones he's ever displayed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I don't mind that so much. I just think, you know, we asked for a change in the system and we got one. We asked for more passion and we got it. Yeah, now That lasted like two games. Well, two, two and a half games, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Fair so play, fair play. let's wait a couple more weeks. Are we going back to Watford and are we going back to the Sunderland and the first half at Coventry? Or are we going back to the second half at Coventry? And in a couple of weeks, we'll know that. And then we can come collectively to a view of how pissed off we are. That's very level-headed of you, Beefy. Well, that's incredible. I'd, I'd like us to be the podcast that is level-headed. Yeah. You know, we don't necessarily have to just spout the company line <laughs> that's fed to us shortly before we record our podcast. We can just wait and see. Okay, let's wait and see, I guess. Um, so what else has been going on around Kenilworth Road? Uh, unfortunately, Elijah Adebayo was the recipient of disgusting racist abuse and it actually happened again yeah. last yeah, night one, yeah uh, and also rob mentioned ahead of the game that he had even more overnight and it's the, it's the old it's like world of social media you know what did there you should be an age limit or, well, or no, something it's, I it's don't probably know. an adult it's probably yeah. like a 40 year old man who mm. has done this to him and it's just i don't how do you explain it how do you explain people being such utter um, knobs, knobs. Yeah. We're not really supposed to swear on no, this, are we? But no, we're, we're monetized now. Yeah, yeah, what a knob. Yeah. Um, great statement in yeah. support of Elijah. Really loved that. It read really well. And you could tell how angry everyone at the club was just by reading that, which was great. It was um, a great statement. Great I, yeah, statement. Yeah, it was. I, yeah. I, I don't think our, our best wishes will get to Elijah, but I hope they do, and we offer them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, if that, that person wants to come on the podcast and... Tell us why they've been such a knobhead. We'd, we'd gladly interview them and tell them they're a knobhead to their face. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really sad. Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, social media is one thing, but it's it's happened so many times, you know, yeah. just n- wider society and everything else. You know, I don't get too, uh, you know, overly political about it, but it's a it's a microcosm of what's happening wider. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. And, and Eli has been a, 
has been seems to be the focus victim of it quite a lot of times, um, and it's it's really sad. He was you know really sung off the pitch despite some of the performance not from him. I thought he was brilliant. Um, I think his goal clearly meant a lot when he scored. The whole team was over there. I mean, I was too busy you know, being thrown over some seating in front of me, but um, yeah, he was he was. Out, the whole team was there um, supporting him as well and he got sung off when he got substituted so you know everyone at the club will be right behind him um. yeah I was just going to say I was proud of him yesterday to, <coughs> to get that goal you know I, I'll be honest I got a bit emotional to be honest when he scored because you know like we say he unfortunately gets it season upon season and it's just it's just disgusting like mm. what's the need it's just oh it's just annoying I, I've said it for a while I think you know, if anyone makes a social media account, for me, they have to, you know, like when you get certain apps, you have to, you know, have a verification, whether <coughs> that's, you know, your ID or something. I just think they need something because, you know, obviously the club have come out and said they know who, you know, who it is and stuff. Um, but I just think they need, just for anything, just going forward, so you, so you just, you know, the person gets punished because it's just disgusting. You know, you just shouldn't, be saying stuff like that at all and it's just season upon season he gets it and yeah it's just you know it's not good at all and you know we know we know with him he's obviously a confidence player as well so you know I'm very happy for him yesterday to get that goal and I believe it will be a similar situation like it is with Morris where it kicks him on um you know you see for Morris when he got his first goal against Sheffield Wednesday then got another one didn't he in the same game so I think with Elijah now, especially if we continue to play the two up front like that, they they will get a lot more goals this season. Yeah, well said. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're quality for this league, they're top-end championship. They, they are, yeah. They and really are. So between them, with Chong coming into form, I really feel like it's time. We've just got to stop conceding. I mean, yeah. 20 goals in, what, 11 games now? That's yeah. terrible. Yeah. That's awful. You, how thoughts, how thoughts can you possibly... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, and he kept a couple out yesterday as well. It could have been more. First half, he said. Could have been more. And before we move on to our next segment, our thoughts are with Chirwog Benny because yeah. nasty injury yeah, ruptured his Achilles, bad. and uh, it looks like his season's done. Like, yeah, like uh, I, I hope he because he was he was just breaking in, starting to start regularly for them, um, and he's yeah, just seems like a great guy. Really, really sad. Yeah, he, he was like a proper loosen player, really nice <coughs> man, and yep. it, it, it worked, and it worked for him at Luton, yeah. and uh, it was a shame to see him move, yeah. but at the same time, great bit of business from us to get that amount of money for him, but yeah, no, no one wants to see this, no one wants to see it no. from him, it, yeah, it's a real shame, but on that note, it's time to spin the wheel. It's OK Football's Wheel of Games. It's time for the wheel. Wheel of games, wheel of games, wheel of games, wheel of games. Because Matt's not here, it's now my turn to spin the wheel. That's a good spin. Yeah, that a good is a spin. quality spin. Yeah, good top spin. spinach. Would you rather? Would okay. you rather? Ooh, got how does, how does this game work, Ollie? So I haven't actually got a description for Would You Rather. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. So it's um, essentially I'll ask a question <laughs> and uh, you got to decide Would You Rather. It's that, you know, the game that you play at sleepovers when you're like really, really young and whatnot. So it's, for instance, Would You Rather go bowling with Thomas Kaminsky or Tom Holmes make you a home-cooked meal? Ooh. Home cooked meal from Tom Holmes, definitely. Yeah, because you're going to lose, aren't you, against Kaminsky? I imagine. <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> I, I think Is he allowed to wear his gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, going changes. bowling, I think. I think uh, you know, bowling with goalkeeping gloves like puts you at a massive disadvantage, <laughs> right? right? Actually, yeah. Unless he's going to like overhand. <laughs> That's what I was imagining. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, home cooked meal from Tom Holmes. I reckon he'd make roast chicken dinner. Like all the trimmings, roast potatoes, Yorkshire's, gravy, homemade gravy, none of that Bisto shite. I reckon, <laughs> I reckon that's where I'd be. Would you rather? I'm going to say the Kaminsky one because I want to see if he's as good as in goal as he is at bowling. Yeah, yeah. you want to you see if he, he actually has the... 
I'd imagine he'd be very good at yeah, bowling, wouldn't you'd he? Think so. He's got the hand eye coordination yeah. to chuck a ball down an alley. Um, it'd be a lot of fun, but it's only like, what, 10 frames in bowling? Yeah. yeah. yeah Whereas, is, yeah. you know, a night with Tom Holmes, you don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I mean, I mean, like, you <laughs> a know. Dinner with Tom Yeah, you, you might, might yeah. stick on a movie afterwards. I've just, I've you only agreed to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, can we do another? So would, okay. would you rather be tackled by Sol Davis oh. or do a 50-50 aerial duel with Carl, Carl Morris? I mean, it wouldn't be 50-50 if it was with Carl Morris. <laughs> yeah, it would have been like 99-1, I think. Mean. <laughs> um, I am... I am someone who had watched that tackle <laughs> live, so there is absolutely no way on earth that I am going to get cleaned out by Sol Davis. I was crunching. I have no idea how the best uh, was tackle it? in Luton's history. Mum <laughs> the, best, the right? best tackle in the history of football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know how he got up from that because he no. went in about knee height. He's on the Astro, isn't he? After the after, yeah. after the uh, touchline, the, the never a red. The best no, thing about it is all the players going like, "What? How yeah. could you give him a red for that?" He got the ball. <laughs> he yeah. got the and ball. He got he the ball, and that was the days <laughs> when you could let them know well. that you're there. Got the yeah. ball. Yeah. Uh, no, Carl Morris for me for that reason. Okay, go on. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm not risking it. I think Colton would be quite gentle in the air, wouldn't he? No. It's like, he, he seems like one of those guys, like, you, you know when you see people competing for an aerial ball and then something happens, he, someone flips over. Colton seems like the type of person that would catch you in yeah, the air. He'd, no, he'd, help, you he'd help you up again, but yeah. he'd clean you out first. <laughs> I mean, that great, uh, was it Sunderland, that great stat where we'd won like yeah. 80% of all the aerial duels. Yeah. Mm. It was so good. I think Carlton's got that Mick Harford about him. Yeah. If you're on his team... He'll do anything for you, but you wouldn't want to be the opposition. <laughs> ah, if you no if way. you celebrate in front of him, he'll just walk straight through you. That is still one of the right. best things uh, yeah. involving Watford. That I <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Well, now it's time for Mark the Hatter's super question of the week. Mark the Hatter, he's put a question to us. Mark the Hatter, he's put a question to us. Right, chaps. I got. A super question for you guys this week. Rob Edwards has a win percentage of 31.46% as Luton Town manager, managing 89 games, winning 28, drawing 23, and losing 38. Can you name the four Luton managers since the year 2000 who have a worse win percentage? And you could all work together for this. 2000. Um. Joe Kinnear, wasn't it? 2000, yeah. roughly. I won't be here. So, Graham. Yeah. Yeah. Graham Jones, 29.3%. That's yeah. 41 games, 112, drew five, lost 24. And that's Richard one of them. Richard Money. No, nah, Richard Money's I, I got one of the highest. Yeah, I suppose he had that great yeah, year, didn't he? Just higher expectation. I was going to say Paul Buckle, but again, I think it's for no. that reason. Um, uh, the only conference manager oh, to be in the... Kevin Blackwell. Was Kevin Bla- oh, but don't, uh, sorry, that's not an answer yet. I'm just <laughs> that's all right. Don't worry. I'm not grading you, you guys. Uh, Kevin Blackwell misses out. 38.1%. Uh, okay. hmm. Yeah, all the conference managers, they actually had yeah. quite yeah, high Yeah, they would have had good percentages, percentages, wouldn't they? Yeah, uh, I think Brabham was the only one that was in the 40s. High 40s at that. Hmm. I think. And we're post Lenny Lawrence and that disaster, aren't we? So who oh. followed Lenny Lawrence? Who did follow Lenny Lawrence? Was it, um, was it Ricky Hill then? Was it, it was Ricky Hill. Ricky, Ricky Hill, 9.5%. Wow. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> 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 Makes Rooney look like oh a king God. among managers. 21 games, 1 yeah. 2, drew 8, <coughs> lost 11. <coughs> but yeah. speaking to Liam George about it, he thinks Ricky would have turned it around. Yeah. Hang on, Mick he Harford? Well, Mick Harford mm. the first time. Really. Mick yeah. Harford, first stint, 27.5%, yep. right. 91 games, 125, drew 29, lost 37. So and you, you have one more. We need one more. One more. It, I, I appreciate it's a bit before your time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm trying to think after Joe Kinnear, then you've got Mike Newell. No, you've missed the manager. Yeah. Mr. Manager who came after Ricky Hill. Nah, it's not Am I going to have to help you out I here? I think so. Lil Ficillo. Lil 
Ouch. Yeah, the one that Joe Kinnear came in as director of football and then overtook him. So 26.7%, 15 games, 1-4, drew 2, lost 9. Coming close to the list, Lenny Lawrence. Uh, he managed till July 2000. Uh, 36%. And I mentioned Kevin Blackwell, 38.1%. Mike Newell, 41.5%. Yeah. Nathan Jones, second stint, 40.6%. Nathan Jones, first stint, 51.2%. Mick Harford, second stint, 57.1%. Yeah, yeah. And John Still, 46.6%. Yeah. Lots of good managers in there. Yeah, great Lots list. Lots of good managers, and there were so many yeah. in a very short amount of time, weren't there? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think Rob will get that win percentage back up, but, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. And uh, we're, we're all behind Rob. He's just got to yeah, show that he wants it. In 20 years, we might be doing a question about... Uh, win percentages that this comes up in, so let's remember exactly. it. Yeah, we he had a do. season in the Prem as well. You know, that's weird. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? <laughs> tough <laughs> gig that one. But Mark, why is this podcast different from all other podcasts? I don't know, Ollie. Why is this podcast different from all other podcasts? Because there's a joke in it. Oh, just me by myself. Just you by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only join in sometimes. It's too, oh, it's too cringe. You can't blame me. Tyler's <laughs> too cool for it. <laughs> what do you call a French man wearing sandals? Philippe Fallop. I've gone slightly differently from, from Matt and decided to go with some one-liners. You've I gone did. for a good joke. I, well, <laughs> you could be the judge of that. I'm not sure. Hi, that. Matt. I've, <laughs> I've gone for um, uh, a, a couple of a couple of one-liners, right? Okay, so <clears throat> is it okay that I start drinking as soon as the kids go to school? Or does that make me a bad teacher? <laughs> 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 Uh, the worst thing about living next to MC Hammer is all the DIY noise. I try and say stop, but to be honest, that just makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's, that's very good. Uh, well done. I like a little one-liner to freshen things up. That's yeah. nice. I worry with the story that I'm just going to get it wrong halfway uh, through. Yeah, and yeah. We'll be there saying the joke four <laughs> times. It wasn't even that funny in the first place. Yeah, I mean, that, that took 12 takes, by the way. <laughs> All right, now it's time to look ahead to our next game against West Brom and we get an update on the Sluga Six. All right, well done to Beefy this week who snatched the lead. Beefy hit two predictions perfectly to give him a six point haul. Josh Shell from All Things Sky Blue podcast. He actually backed Cov to lose. <laughs> Ridiculous. He gained four points on behalf of the opposition preview team with me, Matt, and Phil all bagging a single point. And this week, <laughs> I'll be talking to Albion Analysis ahead of our Friday night fixture against West Brom. So let's talk about West Brom. Uh, less than a week to go. How are the nerves, gents? I, I have no expectations anymore, so I have no nerves accordingly. Rock bottom, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just interested to see what defence we decide <coughs> to play. That's going to be the big one. Um, yeah, who, who's left? Who's left? Anyone, <laughs> anyone can... So it's uh, Hashioka. Yeah. Um, is Mengi back? No, Mengi's out for a little while. May or right? may not be. Rob no, didn't sound that uh, He didn't positive, sound confident. <laughs> did he? Mind you, we had just lost 3-2 after being 2-0 up. So, so it's that. Hashioka and McGuinness. Yep. X. There you go. Done. Pelly Johnson, Joe Johnson probably is going to play left left centre left back side or left centre back. One of them. Well, no, because he, uh, you'd put JJ left wing back. Victor Moses stays right wing back, but you just ha there isn't another centre half, is there? Nope. I know. Well, Rob said in the post match when asked by the in-house club interviewer, so it, what, what, what do we do next week? And Rob was like. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, that's oh, fine that's, then. That's exactly what you want to hear from your manager, right? I mean, right? back four? You have to go back four, right? Because mm. there aren't five fit defensive players. Mm. Uh, we thought this before. Um, <laughs> in the Premier League, when we only had about two people fit for we had team, one. we still we went had, for We had five. one defender yeah, fit, and we still did. went back three, so. didn't we? Um, yeah. At least Hashioka had a good game. Yeah, he did. So, you know, we can feel confident about him and McGuinness. Plus... Who? We don't know. Well, West Brom are having a wobble. Six games without a win. Two back-to-back -back losses, but then they've stopped the rot. 
with, with four with draws endless on the draws. Spin, <laughs> endless draws, um, but also draws where they, they can't score. Yep. Uh, the one positive is that they've been struggling to score. Uh, and Josh Madgen's early season form has sort of dried up, which is reassuring. But, you know, Luton could get their season going again. Who knows? <laughs> it's um, our favourite thing to do. Yeah, it's a big week for the team and Rob Edwards. It really is. Yeah, it's, uh, especially at home as well. We showed so much promise in, in two and a half of those three games. But to only get three points from those, you know... We feel like we're back square one, don't we, a little bit. And w- we need to turn up. Carlos Corbran knows how to play against Luton. Mm. Oh, know, he does. You know, genuinely, most of that's been against Nathan Jones. He used to absolutely do Nathan Jones' nutting, didn't he, obviously? Um, because he was out ta- he could out-tactic him. And that that's going to be a concern. He'll know how to play at Kenilworth Road. He'll know how to set up. Um, it's going to be a really tough game. It is. Um, and our only saving grace is that they they aren't scoring at the moment. But as you say, that that could well change. Everyone scores against us. <laughs> Where's the positivity gone, Beefy? What positivity? Oh, yeah. I never had any. <laughs> oh, the reason well, I'm ahead yeah. in Sluga 6 is I always pick us to lose. Oh, yeah. Good point. Good point. Uh, any thoughts ahead of the game? Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, what I'm interested to see is who takes the set pieces, who our other oh. option is. It's got to be Victor, <coughs> Victor Moses. Victor Moses. Yeah. 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 It'd fit. I can't think of anyone else. No, if, if Baptiste was fit, I would have said him yeah. because yeah. he's shown in games, not directly from set pieces, obviously, but, you know, the games like, uh, who was it in the pre-season, the final game, Celt Vigo, mm. that cross he did. Burnley, it was similar, wasn't it, to yeah. Doughty to then play it to Chong. So it'll be interesting, but, yeah, I don't know. it's one of them where I, I probably back us to score because we do score at home. It's just whether we'll you know, not lose is, is, is the thing for me. So, you know, West Brom not doing the greatest right now, but neither are we. So, I don't know. Anything can happen in the championship. They've got a good set of midfielders as well, haven't they? Um, so, we're going to have to be right on it. I know we always say the same thing, one and lost in midfield. <laughs> we always do, but they have got some, some good players. And if, if they, they start picking up form again, then we're in trouble mm. oh that's a great way to finish this pod uh oh we're in trouble <laughs> you didn't bring me in for my positivity <laughs> <laughs> but that's us done for this week and as always a big thank you to our host the bricklayers arms uh, there's a halloween beer festival happening here 31st of october starts on the 31st runs all weekend and i recommend you come down and try mm. the there are seven Halloween seven ales with Halloween themes Amazing. and two Mad Squirrel keg beers as well, all happening in the back. That's fantastic. It'll be a very exciting one. And we're, we might live stream Beefy just getting progressively more drunk. Yeah, as, yeah. There's, as there's, the I won't be on. talking about football. I'll just be slumped in the corner <laughs> live for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we like to see and as always a big thank you to our audio partners Blackstar Amplification prov- for providing all these cool toys and a big thank you to the record shop in Amersham wherever you get your vinyl if you collect vinyl go check them out they got vinyl, CDs, guitars and also if you're watching this on our YouTube like the video, subscribe for even more Luton Town content. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, why not follow us over there so we can be in your ear on your morning commute? Like, what a way to make a morning commute even worse than it already <laughs> yeah. is. Listen to us. It's just perfect, isn't it? But have a great week, everyone, and try not to let the football get you down. As always, come on, you hatters.